Good afternoon everyone and welcome to this sixth micro lecture in relation to global warming and physiological effects that can be observed on different animal populations. This is the last lecture of this group uh, about global warming and in the previous lectures I detailed some basic mechanisms, physiological mechanisms, I gave you examples where we see effects of global warming, the effects of temperature on fish and bird populations. What I want to give you in this last lecture is an account of a little, a, a, a closer experience, a closer experience related with the problem, and that's why I call these lessons from a research expedition to Greenland. I had the opportunity to participate in a research expedition to this magnificent place called Disco Island. What you see in front here is the marine station of the University of Copenhagen in Denmark, and this is an expedition that, uh, together with some colleagues that will be appearing soon, we did to Greenland in 2002, a few years ago now. This is a beautiful scenario, but not only beautiful, it's also warmer. And these are the participants in this expedition. You see me here, a bit younger back then, together with Professor Tony Farrell from the University of British Columbia, Jenny Turison and Anna Holmgren, that were uh, PhD students at the University of Gothenburg back then. Susanne Holmgren, uh, professor of zoophysiology at the University of Gothenburg, same as Michael Axelsson. And then Craig Franklin, who is a professor of physiology at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia. Together with them, in this beautiful landscape, we started up a project trying to understand the effects of temperature, of an increase in global warming on the cardiovascular and the gastrointestinal physiology of what we thought would be the Arctic cod, Boreo gadusei saida. Our idea here was to basically compare the performance of a true Arctic species, the Arctic cod, with a more commonly distributed cod species that is found at lower latitudes, uh, that would be at higher latitudes actually, uh, not so close to the poles, mm -hmm. in this particular environment. Mm -hmm. And essentially this is a map of Greenland and what we know is that this species, the Arctic cod, is located above, closer to the Arctic Circle than the, the, the cod. And from previous information we understood that these species requires colder waters. Therefore, our idea was to see what happens when these animals are placed at warmer temperatures in comparison with the more uh, distributed uh, common cod species. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is in connection with the observed increase in global temperature which is actually more seen in the Arctic. This is basically an account of, or an estimation of temperature, ambient temperature, along starting from at the onset of the, of the second millennium, now year to 1000 until years or so, and notice that the trend has been to maintain or even decrease until basically the onset of the uh, Industrial Revolution in the last century, when now the temperature keeps increasing. This topic has been discussed to death and the point of this lecture is not to present an account of global warming or discuss what's going on, but essentially once we know that this is happening, what is it that we can do? How, what can we predict? What can we say about how different species in this particular fish will be experience this change in temperature? And what's important, and what is actually relevant in this scenario, is that we went to the Arctic because it was fun, yes, but also because the Arctic is a very special environment where we observe this amplification phenomenon. The changes in global temperature are observed everywhere in the globe, but they are amplified in the Arctic. The areas where we see the largest changes that occur faster, and that's why we decided to go there. This is just a set of icebergs in the Disco Bay, uh, and you're going to be seeing pictures combined with the different results. 
The station is located in the town of Hegedarswak, and this is an account of the temperatures between 2005-2009, so a few years later, after our expedition, where this temperature trend is also seen as increasing. To do that, the first thing we had to do is go fishing. Go fishing for the Arctic cod. And this here we see Susanne Holmgren actually catching a common cod. To our surprise, after a couple of days of fishing, we could not capture a single Arctic cod. Apparently, they had already moved out. Apparently, the temperatures were already too high, but when we were there, we could not capture a single cod or a single true cod. What to do then? Well, it just so happens that fishing from the coast, we managed to fish for other species, and this is actually a short horn scoping. Instead of doing the study as we expected, comparing cod species, we just did a similar study, but comparing sculpting species, which I'm going to detail in a second. And the result of this expedition and this study was actually two different uh, scientific articles. On the first study, cardiovascular performance, in vivo cardiovascular performance, that means in living fish, in three species at different plant temperatures. I'm going to give you a short account of these results. And then a second study looking at the in vitro cardiac performance at different acclimation temperatures in a single species. So essentially, we were looking at three species, and, and in here in one single species, these are articles that have been published. The three species included in the study are all very closely related species. Myoxocephalus scorpius is the commonest scalping. You see the, its distribution here in red, so basically it's common in the, in the northern Europe waters, but also in North America. And when you go to the false, uh, the, the, uh, I don't have the, the English names here, but to the other two species, you see that their distribution is much more circumscribed to higher latitudes. Again, it would be to lower latitudes because they are closer to the pole, lower degrees. So the distribution of these species, these are species that are, these are species that are circumscribed to the Arctic, while this one is not. The expectation in this case was that the Arctic species, although receding, should actually suffer, should uh, demonstrate a larger effect of temperature on their uh, physiology. And for this, what we had to do was simply, we did not have the facilities for running water, so we had to go and collect, uh, warm, uh, go and collect uh, water and also ice in terms of adjusting uh, temperature, and then we had the nice, uh, uh, nice facilities where we could operate the fish in order to actually do some measurements in vivo, or alternatively take some strips of tissue and then place them in organ baths to study them more accurately in vitro conditions. This, this was for in vivo studies, this was for in vitro studies. I'm going to the results short and summarized. I just remind you of what I presented in a previous lecture in this series as the optimum, the temperature optimum associated with different responses. In this case, it's for metabolic scope, for aerobic scope, where we see this optimum at a given temperature. And notice what happens here with, the res uh, with our data on looking at the three species. For your information, the blue line or the blue dots belong to the Myoxocephalus scorpius, which is the generalistic scoping that is found in many places, while the other two are the Arctic species. And what this graph is showing you is what happens with heart rate, what happens with heart rate, or, yes, what happens uh, with heart rate at different temperatures. And what you see here is while the generalistic species, as temperature gets warmer, keeps increasing heart rate, in the other two species, the decrease is obvious. The conclusion is that the Arctic species at higher temperatures cannot perform equally well, cannot perform equally well and fall, while the generalistic species keeps performing well. In a, a warming scenario, where the waters get warmer, the expectation is that the generalistic scalping will move in 
while the other species will have to move away because the water is too warm. If you look at cardiac output, that means the amount of blood pumped by the heart in a given period of time, the picture is exactly the same. The picture is exactly the same. The ability of the heart to pump blood at increasing, temper at increasing temperatures worsens in the Arctic species, improves in the generalistic uh, scoping. Obviously, this will promote some shifts in the fish populations. And notice the important aspect. Where will the Arctic species go? With a global environment, the Arctic species gets pushed to closer to the poles, smaller areas, eventually leading to disappearance. So, in practical, for practical, practical terms, what it means is that the area over which these species can distribute get decreased for the Arctic species at the extent that the generalistic species can go and take over those niches. So, from this acute temperature study, what we conclude is that the optimal temperature for the generalistic species is around 10 degrees, while for the others it's much lower at 4 degrees. In, by looking at cardiac performance in one species, in the short horn scoping, which is actually the generalistic species, what we see is that the performance is not so temperature dependent. These animals cope well with the temperature to which they are exposed. And these studies were done in individuals acclimated at 1 degree or at 6 degrees, and then the experiments were done at the flip temperatures. In other words, animals acclimated at 1 degree were tested at 1 degree and also at 6 degrees. And animals acclimated at 6 degrees were tested at 6 degrees, the temperature at which they were acclimated, or at the lowest temperature, or 1 degree. And the, the, basic, the basic outcome of this data, looking again at heart rate on cardiac output, is that these hearts are able to tolerate these temperature ranges much better. The performance of the heart, these are studies done in vitro on the heart, the performance of the heart does not decrease dramatically, as we would have expected with the other species. We just did not have time to work on the other species. A beautiful picture from Greenland from that time, the moon over the iceberg. Yet another one, and this is the end of my presentation. So thank you for listening, and I hope that this has enlightened it a bit of work that is done in practice, that we have done in practice, in terms of understanding the issues with global warming and how they affect, in this case, 